This is Derek with Vice Realty. I'm going to talk about the CDC moratorium again, some district court cases here in Las Vegas, and just a little bit about the eviction process and how easy tenants really do have it. We don't ever hear about this side of it. We hear about how horrible it is for tenants. I just don't get it. I don't see it. I've been doing this for years. Tenants have it good, and as time goes forward, they have it better and better and better. Uh, it's the landlords that have it so bad. Um, I own about 79 rental properties right now. I've just sold three of my buildings. I have seven other buildings that are in contract to be sold right now. It absolutely breaks my heart. I have worked years and years and years, two and three jobs, for years to build these things, to rehab them, to put tenants in there, to improve the neighborhood, to call investors that I know to try to buy on the same block so we can improve the whole area. And I'm gonna lose it all in a matter of one year because the government has decided I need to support every single family in those buildings out of my own pocket. And I did it for about a year, but I just can't do it anymore. I have to go. And I know tenants think that, who cares? No big deal. It's not my problem, but it's going to be your problem. Because people like me come into these neighborhoods and they fix them. They improve the properties. Do you think anybody's improving properties right now? They are not. They do not care. These properties are gonna get dilapidated. They're gonna fall apart. The neighborhoods are going to fall apart. And while that's happening, the rent prices are going to increase, not decrease. Landlords have to make up the money somewhere, and there's going to be a shortage of rental housing available. I'm pulling 79 units off the market here locally that I own, that I go to every day, that I check on, that I try to do my best to help tenants on. It's being bought by an out-of-state corporation. Do you think they're gonna show up every day and look at it? They're not. Do you think they're gonna have the same intimate knowledge of those buildings or those tenants that I have or the ability to just run down there in 10 minutes and see what's going on? No. Whoever is running the corporation lives in another state. They're not gonna be able to do that. These people are gonna be pushed to the side. Their maintenance requests are gonna be pushed on the back. The stringency of the rental application is going to be insane. It's gonna come back and get these tenants. And I just don't, I don't understand the short-sighted view here. Landlords and tenants should be working together but the government has created rules that say the tenants have rights and the landlords don't. And it just doesn't work that way. You gotta have a symbiotic relationship. No relationship works completely one-sided and actually is successful. And this will not be either. So I wanna just go over what the moratorium does. The moratorium says for any reason, if you say, I can't pay the rent, no questions asked, you're good. As long as you make less than $100,000 a year, you're good. You don't have to pay any rent. I don't care if you have a disability check coming, Social Security coming, a pension coming. If you drive a Ferrari, it doesn't matter. You just have to say, can't pay the rent, and you don't have to pay it if you make less than $100,000 a year. Well, that doesn't seem real fair to me. Uh, I don't really get it. It doesn't work for me. Obviously, I'm selling out because I can't do it anymore. It's not right. It, it's heartbreaking. I know so many investors and they're, they're running like the places are on fire. And these are people that want to give low income housing. They want to improve their communities. They want to give back and they're being forced out and they're just going to be left and giant corporations are going to buy these properties up and then they're going to be treated really, really poorly. Anybody been to New York or Chicago or Los Angeles? and seeing giant corporations run housing, how's that looking these days? I bet that's awesome. Well, it's been extended again. Today's April 1st, 2021. We've extended the federal until the end of June. And I promise you, I'm telling you today, when June comes, they'll extend it again. Probably three months, I'm gonna say till the end of September, and they'll come up with a new excuse. At the end of September, they'll extend it again and they'll come up with a new excuse, and they're gonna keep doing this over and over and over. My guess is they just didn't realize the landlords were this hard to break. They probably thought these people would have been out long ago, they're still fighting, they're still holding in, and they're hoping. The same way I hope Santa Claus is real. It's not. This is over. 
It's terrible. And here in Nevada, we just renewed the state eviction moratorium for two more months under the guise of, well, we just care about the landlords and we need to make sure that we don't evict anybody until we get them paid out. Really? So you can send stimulus checks to people literally in a day, but we just can't figure out how to get landlords paid. Just can't figure it out. Pretty crazy. They're not gonna figure it out in two months either. They're not gonna figure it out in three months or six months. It's never going to be figured out. Yes, there will be some payments made through tenants to some landlords, absolutely. Will it be the majority? No. Will it be even half? No. I will be shocked if it's 20 to 25% because that money that's not used, where do you think it goes? It gets to go right back to the state. Right back to the state. That's pretty convenient. So I was gonna give you a district court case. Uh, I go to court a lot. I see some horrible things. I mean, court used to be somewhat fair. Not anymore. Uh, I had a district court case. So when, when you file for eviction, you first put notices on the door. In this case, it was for no pets allowed. Lady decided to bring three giant dogs into her house. They destroyed the house. They destroyed the grounds. And we told her she can't do that. And she said, too bad, I'm doing it. So we post a five-day notice to correct that issue. At the end of that, when she doesn't correct it, we post a five-day detainer. Now, these are five judicial days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We don't get Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or any holidays. So this process takes about three weeks. After that, we get to apply to the court. I get to pay for that out of my pocket. The tenant gets to fight it for free. The tenant loses in court. The tenant appeals it, loses again. The tenant then appeals it to district court. Again, all this is free, but I get to pay. The, the, the district court decides the tenant should be allowed to have dogs even though your lease says they can't. Should be allowed. Therefore, the eviction will be turned over and the tenant can now have dogs. Well, here's what that does. She lives on a house with six apartments behind it. Now everyone in those apartments says, well, I'm gonna have dogs too. So now I went from a nice clean yard to seven units with a total of 14 dogs in a matter of two weeks. Who's gonna ever move in there? Who wants to live there like that? Do you think they're cleaning up after these dogs? Do you think they care about the barking? Do you think they care about the neighbors? No, because they have no rules. They can do anything they want. And as a bonus, since I told the lady that she can't have dogs, she decided, you know what? Even though I drive a brand new Escalade, even though I have money coming in from the government through unemployment and, <laughs> can't even believe it, disability. I also won a lawsuit recently, but I'm not gonna pay you rent because I don't have to. And there's no repercussion for that. She just gets to sit there and live off of me and destroy my property. And with the help now of the state and the city and the county and the federal, they're egging her on like, yep, stick it in them. It is absolutely ridiculous. Case number two we just had, this has been happening here in Las Vegas. People will go and find a single woman and basically throw her out of the apartment and take it over. Well, when you call the police, the police say that's a civil matter. It is not a criminal matter, it's civil. You can now file with the court. Pretty crazy. So we do, we file with the court, which takes time. We eventually get to court and they say, yes, you're not on the lease, you're not supposed to be there. Well, they can appeal it, same way the dog lady did. They lose again, they appeal it to district court. The district court decided since that tenant sent us an email requesting a repair when they moved in illegally by kicking someone out, that they now acted as a tenant and now have tenant rights and tenant protections under the CDC moratorium and they will not be asked to leave. That is insane. The poor woman who was thrown out lives in her car now has nowhere to go, and is just done. This is literally what's going on, and I don't think most people realize it. So I've decided I'm gonna start making more of these, and I'm gonna go out with a video camera and show people what is actually happening with this eviction moratorium and how horrible it really is. It's not helping most people. It's helping people that otherwise would not have been very great people to begin with. It's helping criminals. It's helping people find a way to steal. I have plenty of people in my units, and I manage over 500 of them, who are not paying, 
who are on Social Security, who are on disability, who have pensions. But hey, now it's time to get a brand new car. Now it's time to take that vacation we can never afford before. You know what? I want a couple new TVs in here. Why not? And by the way, we broke the window out. I know I normally would have to pay for it. Too bad the landlord will pay for it. You know why? Because they can't force it on me. And if they try, I'll call code enforcement and tell them that that window's broken and I need it fixed. And guess who pays for it? Me. Again. I'm done. This is ridiculous. It's not right. I don't even, I don't even know what to say, really. I mean, most people get paid to go to work. I am forced, forced to go to work. Not only for free, it costs me money. I don't get to say, I quit, I'm done, I'm not taking care of your place. Nope, that's illegal. Do you want to buy a restaurant today where you're not allowed to charge for food? And then when the tenant, the customer in that restaurant finally leaves after gorging on your food without paying and they decide to come back later with their whole family, you have to give them food, you have to serve them. And if they decide to leave again without paying, there's nothing you can do. Don't call the police, you don't get to do that. You work for free because we decided that's how it works. And it's not going to change and it's not going away and it's not temporary. This is just the way now. So I'm going to start making some of these videos and I'm going to educate people on how this works because I don't think most people realize what's really going on.